today was a good day. Hey everybody, today I'm going to make for you a uh, really nice shrimp and grits. Uh, Aaron and I went up to Bluffton today and went to Jim and Nick's barbecue and had these really amazing spicy hot link sausages that unfortunately they wouldn't sell me so I'm not going to be able to use them for you tonight. Jim and Nick's get on it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I uh, picked up some fresh local shrimp on the way back. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to clean them because uh, it's definitely going to be the first step. You can see I've done most of these. Um, I've just got these on ice holding them until I'm ready to use them. want well, to make sure that they're really nice and chilled. Um, when you buy them fresh, this is how they're going to look. Okay, um, so to clean these up, what you're going to need to do is basically just get a little violent, uh, pop that head off like that. Sad, I know. Um, just kind of discard those. Probably best to keep a bowl or something. I'll just pick that out of the sink later. Um, the rest of this um, shell here, we can use that actually over here. What I've got going on right now in this pot is what you would call a court bouillon. Uh, court bouillon is uh, just basically like a really quick stock that you can make. Um, I'm using these shrimp shells. Uh, I've got a half an onion in there, a few cloves of crushed garlic, uh, a couple bay leaves, and then instead of salt to season this, um, I used a couple teaspoons of Old Bay to really give it kind of classic seafood flavor. Alright, so we're going to go back over the sink now. Uh, you're going to want to have the cold water running slightly. Okay, and then just using a pair knife, you can buy a shrimp to bane or if you want, um, they are somewhat helpful. But once you get it peeled, you're just going to kind of just run your knife along that back vein like that. And then just sort of pull it off to the side, scraping out all that vein that's in there. Just kind of let that go down the drain. And then just give it a quick rinse to make sure you've got everything off of there. And that's how you peel and devein a shrimp. Okay. So I'm going to take a quick break, clean up, and then come back and make that lentil for you. Okay, we're back, and as I mentioned, we're going to use polenta today instead of a classic grit. Uh, polenta is just a really coarse ground cornmeal, so basically it's the same thing as grits. Um, and one of the reasons I'm doing this dish is because I did get a request for a gluten-free pescatarian dish, and this has both those things, so you're welcome, uh, Miss uh, Leah. Uh, so we are going to first start out cutting up a bell pepper. If you haven't seen me do this before, really quick, easy way to do it, just lay it on its side. And then just kind of roll it across your board like that. Okay, and then you can just discard all that. Now just cut this into sections, whatever you feel comfortable cutting, basically. Just like that. Go ahead and get that pan hot. <laughs> okay. Just cut them into julienne strips like that, and then just run your knife across the other direction. You get a nice dice on that. Okay. Watch those fingers. Always best to form a little claw there. Actually, cut myself cutting a bell pepper when I was teaching a class downtown here in Savannah. It was pretty awful. Stop the whole thing and start over. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right. So we're gonna start out with a little bit of oil in the pan, just olive oil. You can use butter if you want. I'm trying to keep this a little bit light today. As I said, we went to Jim and Nick's barbecue earlier, and it is not the lightest fare in the world, but it is quite delicious, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Okay, so that's got to heat up for just a second. I turned that pan on kind of late, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get this onion cut up, too. Um, I'm going to use the other half of the onion from the uh, onion I'm using in the stock. So just like, cut that in half. Peels off. I'm not going to dice this up. I'm going to leave it julienne just for a little extra texture in this in these grits. Okay. So to julienne that up, once you have it like that, just kind of just, just quick run through with your knife. Just, just like that. Okay, so 
so this should be good to go. When I've got this set to high, I really want to uh, sweat these out. And that's going to take just a minute, so I'm not going to make you sit through it. So we'll take a break and come back, and then I'll finish this up. See you in a sec. All right, so if you take a look in the uh, pan here, you can see that these are starting to get a little bit brown. The onions are starting to get a little bit translucent. So what I'm going to do now is go into that with the polenta. Just a cup of polenta. Doesn't look like a lot, but that's going to expand. And uh, that'll serve about four people. All right, so I'm just going to toast this just for a second with all these vegetables. And what this is going to do now is let that polenta sort of absorb that oil that's in that pan and see how it kind of dried it up a little bit and then give it a, a little bit of a toasted flavor. Okay. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to go into this now with this stock. like that, just so you can catch all that other gunk that's in that uh, stock there. Okay, and as soon as that hits, you're going to just kind of start stirring it up. I'm going to cut this down. You don't really want it to keep boiling. You just kind of just want to let it simmer until all that polenta is rehydrated and uh, not crunchy. Okay, so while that's simmering, I'm going to go ahead and now do it with some garlic. If you've seen me cook before, you know I kind of have a thing for garlic, so I've got about six cloves going in there, but if you want to go a little bit less, by all means. Do what makes you happy. So what? Who cares? <laughs> so what? Who cares? Doesn't matter. go. Tons of garlic. Alright, so now like I said, we're just going to let this simmer until that's rehydrated. Um, and then to finish this off, we're just going to season with salt and pepper. Ooh, I almost forgot the really delicious part of this. Uh, you're going to want to use fresh thyme. Just leave it on the stick and just throw it in there. Just like that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and let this finish up. And then once this is completely rehydrated, what we're going to do for creaminess is use um, the sweet and cream corn here. A lot of times when people make shrimp and grits, they load the grits up with cheese and cream and, you know, it's pretty damn delicious, but not the kind of thing you can eat every day. The corn's kind of a nice healthy twist. And then for something uh, kind of nice and leafy and green in there, a little bit of fiber, we're going to fold some arugula that's going to wilt down, add a little bit of uh, kind of bitter green flavor to that, and it's going to be quite delicious. So once we get to that point, I'll check back in with you and show you how it's done. All right, so if you take a look in our uh, pan here, you can see that these, this bit of polenta is really kind of starting to absorb a lot of that liquid. It's still probably got about a few more minutes before it's done cooking. So what I'm going to do now is fold in that um, sweet and cream corn. And what that's going to do is provide that extra moisture that it needs to finish up. Just going to fold that in. And then right after that goes in, you're going to go in batches now with your arugula. Because it, it does look like a lot, but it's, it's just like spinach. It's going to kind of wilt down to, I'm not going to say nothing, because it is going to have a pretty heavy presence in there, but it's not going to look like that. batch. If you can't get your hands on arugula, spinach will work just fine. Or if you don't like arugula, it's kind of a, seems to be a bit of an acquired taste. I hated it the first time I tried it, but now I absolutely love it. Okay. Just go 
ahead and do it the rest. Looks pretty good, and at this point, in just another couple minutes, that arugula is going to get wilted down, and your uh, grits are going to be ready to go. And then we'll start on the uh, the shrimp and sauce that's going to go over the top. Okay, we're back, and we're going to make the uh, sauce now with our shrimp. Um, what I've got going on right here is a little bit of um, olive oil. I'm sauteing those are big chunks of garlic. You've got some spiced jalapenos. The jalapenos can be omitted if you don't want them, if you're sensitive to spice. You can kind of just add as much as you want to that. I don't feel like you need to make this real spicy. I just kind of happen to like spicy food. So I added some butter to that, just a couple tablespoons, not too much, because I really want the flavor of the butter in this. So I'm going to be adding some tomatoes to this later, and it's going to help cut the acidity. All right. Okay. So I'm going to bring this over here and just go into it now with our uh, shrimp that I've already cleaned up. This might start popping because there's a lot of water on this. Just watch that. You can see it does kind of help if you pull it away from the stove like that. Okay, let's put that back on the heat now. Shrimp really don't need to be cooked very long. As soon as they turn pink, they're going to be done. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this now with a little bit of white wine. You don't have to get real fancy and use anything expensive. <laughs> like a cheap $3 bottle of wine will do you. Once you have that wine in there, I'm using these um, from your Glen, these fire roasted diced tomatoes. Should get a nice flavor. Okay, and now I'm just going to kind of just let this come up to a simmer. It's ready to go over your grits. Uh, just check it before you serve it, see if the sauce needs any salt and pepper. Okay, I just want to show you real quick because I had a bit of a situation here. Um, after I added the shrimp to this, it started to cook just a little bit too quick. The broth was a little too uh, thin. You really want to give that time to reduce down to let that wine cook off of it. Um, so the way you should do this, just um, saute that uh, jalapenos and garlic. Um, add, your add your white wine and then add your tomatoes. Let that reduce down. Then once it starts to reduce down, um, add your shrimp to it and let them cook in that sauce once it gets nice and thick. Um, what I did just to kind of let that reduce down a little bit more. Uh, you can see here my shrimp are already cooked. You got those jalapenos, tomatoes, all that's nice and cooked. I'm um, just letting that broth kind of reduce down and get nice and thick. Um, and then once I plate this, we're going to do the grits. We're going to pile this on top and then pour that sauce over and it is going to be lovely. Welcome to my kitchen! I'm just kidding. <laughs>